Welcome and thank you for listening to the first ever broadcast of the Elegance of Science Awards Ceremony. I'm Amy Bueller from the UF Libraries. And I'm Andrei Surakov from the Florida Museum of Natural History. And we're glad you're here. This year, the contest is celebrating its ninth year. The contest was inspired by the work of Felice Frankel, a research scientist and scientific photographer at MIT. Her work has been seen on the covers of Nature, Science, PNAS, and many more. This year's contest received 72 entries, including five video entries from 25 different areas across campus. Without our contestants, the elegance of science would not be possible. Before we honor some of the contestants, we wanted to take a moment to recognize the five members of our judging panel for their hard work in reviewing all of the entries and selecting our winners. Kimberly Backer Kelly is a core research technician at the Interdisciplinary Center for Biotechnology Research. Anne Baird is a design librarian at the Architecture and Fine Arts Library. Jonathan Bremer is a laboratory technician at the Division of Plant Industry. Kristen Grace is a photographer at the Florida Museum of Natural History. And Christina Pekakic is an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatrics. Thank you again to all of our judges. Scores for artistic and educational properties of each image are added from all the judges. We will be briefly in presenting 30 images and the video with the highest scores, announcing the winners at the end. Full descriptions of the images can be found on the contest's we website. But first I present to you this image, which didn't score particularly high, but got the overall highest artistic score. This image was uh, submitted by Raylene Crandall from Forest Resources and Conservation, um, entitled Kissed by Fire. Uh, it was taken in Belize during uh, the research project that explores timing of fire and its influence on pines. Our next image is Monarch Mania by Sam Epstein at the Florida Museum of Natural History in the McGuire Center. Sam has worked with monarchs for six years and has fallen in love with them as an organism, an insect, a migrating powerhouse, and a charismatic attention getter in public education. This piece is a mixed media piece with each monarch is hand sculpted and dimensional on the canvas. This is an image by Sally Denotta from College of Veterinary Medicine uh, entitled March of Microglia. Cells in spinal cord of a mouse are viewed here uh, via fluorescent microscopy. In red, the blood vessel is shown. What is amazing about this image is that it observes uh, cells in a living animal. This image of a, what looks like a moth is called Hearing with Wings by Scott Sinnell uh, at the Florida Museum of Natural History. One of the cool things about modern taxonomy and systematics that it allows us using modern tools such as DNA uh, analysis to react past mistakes. Uh, this species belongs to Hidalidae, a family that everyone thought were moths, but turned out belong to the same evolutionary branch as butterflies. They developed hearing organs on wings to avoid bats. So they're basically a night flying butterflies. Our next piece is Our Invasive Ants, Longhorn Crazy Ant by Virginia Rose Siegel from Entomology and Nematology. With characteristically long legs and antenna, these ants earned their common name due to their erratic and quick nature of their movements. Their diet fluctuates from high protein to high sugar, depending on the season, which makes eradication extremely challenging. Another image by Raylene Kandel uh, is called Painted by Fire. Uh, most plants uh, adapt to fire-maintained ecosystems 
by surviving only underground, but some like this one also can survive by inhabiting wetter areas, so fire intensity is lower. Our next piece is the notorious DRG by Mary Casper in Biomedical Engineering, which features the dorsal root ganglia or DRG, which are large bodies of cells that house our body's sensory neurons. Neurites are seen projecting from the center of the DRG, which form complex networks to relay feelings of touch from our limbs and organs to our brain. This is another invasive ant, uh, a twig ant, uh, a picture by Rose Siegel. Um, this ant used to populate uh, from South America to Texas, but now have much wider distribution. Uh, they live in small families inside twigs and forage for various insects, adversely, adversely affecting, um, for example, butterfly populations in Florida. Our next image was submitted by Larry Reeves from Entomology and Nematology, entitled Pepsis. In the Sonoran Desert, tarantulas have no greater enemy than Pepsis wasps. Female wasps are tarantula hunters and will inject venom into the tarantula, causing paralysis. Then the wasp lays a single egg on the tarantula, which will live the remainder of its life in suspended animation as it is slowly eaten alive by the wasp larva. Macrophages in Green by Niosha Amari from, from Physiology uh, at the College of Medicine. It sh this image shows mouse colon in cross-section as viewed through confocal microscopy. Our next image was submitted by Kyon Ho Cho from Environmental Horticulture entitled Glow Petunia. So this petunia was genetically transformed with seven genes encoding fluorescent protein ZS green one. And in the image, you can see that the green fluorescence is in all flower organs, including petals, stigmas, styles, anthers, and filaments. Another image of invasive ants by Rose Siegel, this time of little fire ant, uh, originating in central and South America, but now making their way around the world. They're an agricultural pest and need to be controlled. But this image to me depicts the beauty and complexity of their behavior. Another image by Lawrence Reeves from Entomology and Nematology. This beach piece features a, a type of mosquito that is different from most in that it does not want to suck your blood. They actually get their protein needed for reproduction elsewhere. Their larvae actually consume the larvae of other mosquitoes. So these mosquitoes are beneficial to humans. Not only do they reduce the number of blood feeding mosquitoes, but they spend their adult lives visiting flowers in search of nectar, so thus serving as pollinators. Another mixed media image by Sam Epstein from the Florida Museum, where she hand sculpted parts of the monarch butterfly and flower on the canvas. Sam has been working for years with this species. This piece is entitled The Starry Night by Smit Patel in Biomedical Engineering. And this is an eye-gazing microscopic view of human cells fluorescently labeled for nuclei in cyan and cellular actin filaments in the magenta gradient. These cells reside within the human pancreas and produce insulin. Another submission from Raylene Crandall demonstrates the awful and beautiful experience of participating in a controlled burn. This was taken during research projects exploring how timing of burns affects ecosystem in the Caribbean. Our next piece is Crimson Curtain by Jenna Pocky of IFAS. 
This photo is of 100 times magnification of a red lace wing butterfly wing lit from behind. Interestingly, as caterpillars, this species feeds on passion fruit and passion flower vines and in turn absorbs the chemical toxins that are used as a defense against other predators. The coloring is a warning since most vertebrates will remember the effects of eating a toxic butterfly and will therefore avoid that species for the rest of its lifetime. Another image by Nyosha Amari uh, shows confocal microscopy of immune cells in tissue culture of neural tissue. The green extensions, also known as feet, on some of these cells is the way cells check out their environment. Another image by Larry Reeves from Entomology and Nematology. So to avoid predators, some mosquito species have gotten creative. Any naturally occurring uh, fish-free water zone is likely to be uh, specialized in a larval habitat for mosquitoes. So these mosquitoes lay their eggs exclusively in the insect eating pitchers of the purple pitcher plant pictured here. These pitchers are insect traps designed to capture and consume insect prey, yet they are the sole larval habitat for these mosquitoes. This is a very different work from Kevin Knudsen of the Department of Mathematics. Uh, demonstrating statistical simulation of how voting districts should be mapped using past voting data. The goal of this study is to demonstrate presence or absence of partisan gerrymandering in redistricting. Our next piece is Matriarchal Line by Jillian Marie Browning of Art and Art History. Referencing the botanical studies of botanist Anna Adkins, matriarchal line is a series of cyanotypes of the hair of the artist, her sisters, and her mother. Using domestic materials such as cotton fabric and embroidery hoops, the artist references traditional acceptable forms of women's artistry, while also exploring the physical depiction of the hair prints in a round state resembling DNA strands through a microscope. Another ant image, this time of the much better familiar to us all important fire ants, Linopsis invicta. Despite it being one of the best studied insect species, we still didn't make too much progress in controlling it. This picture depicts the awful beauty of uh, its structures, its head, and especially its mandibles. This image is Starry Night, Dentical Arrangement by Shelby Figueroa, the Florida Program for Shark Research. This image features the dermal denticles in the skin of the thorny skate, and it's visualized using 3D microtomographic reconstruction. The enlarged hook-like denticles along the midline give this thorny skate its name. This is a painting, a combination of watercolor ink and color pencil by Mindy Lighthype from Art and Art History Department, showing what the Florida Panther uh, would like uh, if you remove all the soft tissues on one side. This image, entitled The Glycostat by Ed Phillips in Biomedical Engineering, depicts a human pancreatic beta cell with fluorescently labeled microtubule cytoskeleton, which are the long fibers, and insulin secretory vesicles, which are the small dots. Beta cells like this one reside in the pancreas and are responsible for secreting insulin, the hormone that controls blood sugar. This image was actually generated by super resolution microscopy. In this image of mosquito by Larry Reeves, a mother mosquito is guarding its eggs from being splashed out of a rainwater filled fruit husk. This species of mosquitoes tend to guard their eggs until they hatch. So they are very good mothers.
This piece entitled, The Raspberry-Like Cells That Produce Insulin, is by Simmit Patel in Biomedical Engineering. So these human pancreatic islets are raspberry-like spheroids of cells that help maintain blood glucose levels in our bodies. These are human islets, chemically colored with insulin in yellow, actin filaments in magenta, blood vessel cells in green, and DNA in cyan. This is another mosquito image from Larry Reeves, but it doesn't look like one unless one looks closer. Actually, if you zoom in on this image, there are five female mosquitoes that are trying to get blood meal from the mouth of American crocodile in the Florida Everglades. And this year, we had a tie for second and third place. So one of our winners is Mindy Lighthype from Art and Art History with her image entitled Water Lettuce. So water lettuce is a highly invasive aquatic plant found in most of the fresh waterways in Florida. This pen and ink illustration is used for the identification and classification of the plant. Drawings like this are necessary to alert the public about invasive species. The Stream of Consciousness by Jared Tanner from Clinical and Health Psychology this image split the second and third place with the previous one. The image shows brain connections between different regions that allow us to see, hear, feel, laugh, cry, speak, remember, plan. In other words, they are responsible for our self-identity. The image utilizes MRI and computer technology. Understanding the changes in these connections over time can help understand how brain matures and declines with age. And this year's winner of the Elegance of Science contest is Mindy Lighthype from Art and Art History with Air Potato Vine Life Cycle. The air potato vine is an invasive plant found in almost every county in Florida. UF found a beetle that only eats this plant it was tested in quarantine for five years as a biological control. Once approved, the beetle has been released into certain areas and has done a great job at keeping the plant from going out of control. This illustration shows the life cycle of the vine as well as the beetle. The viewer can identify the plant and know that the beetle is present by looking for leaves that have been eaten by a shiny red and black beetle. Again, we'd like to thank our judges and our contestants for this year's Elegance of Science contest. Andre and I would like to especially thank uh, those at the Florida Museum of Natural History and UF Libraries that supported this contest. We hope that you found the images that you saw today stimulating and begin to find the beauty in your own daily work. As mentioned earlier, please visit our website to see all of this year's entries and the full descriptions. In closing, we'd like to share the top video entry from Mahai Puri in Wildlife Ecology and Conservation, featuring footage taken during fieldwork in India. We hope that you have a safe and healthy weekend. <laughs>